Let's take a look at an example of writing an interface and writing derived classes that implement that interface. What we'll do is we have a shape interface and this defines some pure virtual member functions and then we'll implement concrete derived classes, namely the circle and square classes. And then if we actually set up a shape pointer to be pointing at one of those objects, whenever we call a member function on through that pointer, we'll see that we'll get dynamic binding. We'll get the derived class version of that member function being called. I'll pause for a few seconds in case you'd like to work on this on your own, and then we'll look at it together. Okay, let's take a look at this code within the Xcode editor. We'll go ahead and implement our circle and square classes here, and then we'll run our main function and make sure that the behavior is what's expected. So let's start with circle. We need it to derive from shape and we need the public keyword so that we get public inheritance as opposed to the default private. And if you actually look at the error message that Xcode gives us, it tells us that circle is an abstract class. That's because at this point, it's inheriting those pure virtual functions from shape, but we haven't actually overridden them yet. And because we have pure virtual functions, that means that circle is currently abstract. Once we go ahead and finish writing our circle class, then it will no longer be abstract because we'll actually have implementations for each of those virtual functions. Let's start off with the data representation. For a circle, the only thing that we need to represent is the radius. And it needs to be a double because if we look at the code in main, we see that it actually constructs a circle using a double radius. Now that we have a data representation, we should think about what the invariants are. For a circle, in order for it to be a valid circle, the radius must be greater than zero. Okay, now that we have a data representation, we can go ahead and start working on the public interface. The first thing that we actually need is a constructor to make sure that the representation invariants are met. In main, the constructor that's actually used is one that takes in a single double argument. So let's write that one. We'll call our parameter radius in. We'll initialize our radius member in the member initializer list. And then within the body, we'll check our representation invariant, namely that radius is greater than zero. Okay, so that's it for the constructor. Now we can write overrides for each of the pure virtual functions that are in shape. So the first one is area. And I'm actually going to use the override keyword just in case I make a mistake, then the compiler will tell me. Okay, in order to compute the area of a circle, the formula is pi r squared. So we have a pi constant at the top. We'll use that and then we'll multiply by the radius twice and return that value. Okay, so then let's move on to perimeter. And I'm using the override keyword once again. And we actually see that the compiler is actually reporting an error. It's saying that this non this virtual this non-virtual member function has been marked override and it's actually hiding a virtual member function. Okay, what's happened here is that we actually forgot the const keyword that we have in in the base class. And so therefore what we did was, was we changed the signature. We're no longer getting overriding. We're actually getting name hiding instead. And so that the, because of the override keyword in the derived class, the compiler actually checks for this and reports an error. What we need to do in order to fix that is to put in the const there so that we have the same exact signature as in the base class. Okay, so then the perimeter of a circle, the formula is two times pi times r. So we'll go ahead and return that. The last thing we need to implement is the scale member function. So that takes in a double. It isn't actually const because it needs to modify the data members. And so we won't put that const in, but we will put that override in just to make sure that the compiler checks for us that uh, we didn't mess anything up with the signature. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna put here is just an assertion that 
the actual scaling factor is greater than zero because if it isn't, we would actually end up violating our representation invariance. And then I'll just scale the radius by our scaling factor. Okay, that's it for our circle class. And as we can see, there aren't any errors in main that have to do with circle. There still is an error with square because we haven't actually implemented that yet. So let's go ahead and proceed to implement square. And it's going to be very similar to what we did for circle. Once again, the first step is to determine a representation. And for a square, we just need to represent the length of a single side. So we'll add a data member called side that's going to be of type double. And our invariant, just as in circle, will be that this must be greater than zero. Okay, then we can move on to our public interface. The first thing that we need to do is write a constructor. Looking at the code in main, it calls a constructor that takes in a single double argument. So we'll write a constructor with a single double parameter. We'll call it side in. We'll use the member initializer list to initialize our side member. We'll once again check our representation invariant, which is that the side must be strictly greater than zero. Okay, so now we can move on and implement each of our virtual member functions. So we have area. The area of a square is just the square of the side. Then we have perimeter. There's four sides, so we just need to return four times our side length. And finally, we have our scale that takes in a double parameter. And again, this isn't const, so we're just going to put override there as opposed to const override. Once again, we'll assert that this value is greater than zero, that the scaling factor is greater than zero, so that our representation invariants are maintained. And then, if that's the case, we'll go ahead and scale our side by that amount. OK, so let's check back in main. We see that Xcode isn't reporting any errors. So we can go ahead and run our code and see if we actually get the expected results. And indeed, we did.